Hey, it's Terrence here. Welcome to Photography in 123. Today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to change your camera's file format to save in raw file format rather than JPEG format. This is great for all those people who are looking to learn how to do this and looking to try to experiment with raw file format but just don't know how to do it on their camera. But first, before we get into that, I have a question for you. And the question is really, what questions do you have? I'm trying to develop this YouTube channel to be very useful for everybody who takes a look at it. So I want to know what questions you have on photography and on Canon cameras that I might be able to answer. And uh, I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. So post your questions in the comments field below. I will look at them on a frequent basis and try to upload at least a video a week uh, answering some of these questions so that you will be able to get your answers uh, quickly and easily and subscribe to my channel please so you could follow uh, all the information I send out and uh, find out when your questions are answered and see what other people are asking. So raw file format, first question for some people may be why do I even want to use raw file format? It's three reasons uh, I recommend it frankly. Uh, one is it includes all the sensor data and what that means is all the light that comes through uh, the lens and hits the sensor, there's a ton of data in, in the sensor uh, that the sensor has collected that it creates in its uh, buffer in the camera. When you use JPEG format, format what it's doing is, is actually creating a compressed image file format, which is what JPEG is, it's a compressed file format, and putting settings like white balance on automatically, whichever you have it set to, or automatically figuring out what to use, adjusting the exposure, adjusting different color and saturation, that kind of stuff, to create your final image. Which is fine for somebody who just wants to click the, uh, the image and post it somewhere. But somebody wants to do a little more modification to it down the road, uh, may want to have more data so there's more flexibility. And that really leads into number two is it's a lot easier to do editing and software afterwards when you're using a raw file format. Um, you know, a good example is white balance. If you use a JPEG and you have the wrong white balance, you might have to do a lot of different tweaks and changes to be able to get the white balance looking different in your, your image. However, when you use raw, you can just click the drop down and change the white balance as your camera would have had a uh, setting for and go exactly to what it would look like using that white balance. So it's much faster in a lot of uh, areas like that and much easier to use. And third, for the uh, true photography junkies who want to do high dynamic range processing, uh, HDR shots, you only need one file, one raw file to do an HDR processing in most HDR software. Whereas with JPEGs, you need to have three or more files. It all goes back to number one, you have a lot more sensor data. So it has more of the, the highs and lows and the darks and lights of the image in that raw file that you may not see visibly offhand, but the raw, sorry, the HDR programs can use that to actually do all the, uh, the processing. Drawbacks of raw files, and there's anything that's good always has a negative. Giant file, si file size. Typical JPEGs on a, on a good DSLR are 1 to 2 megs in size, maybe a little bigger, maybe 5 megs, 6 megs you're going to get uh, 10, 15, 20 meg file size with raw file. It takes up a lot more room, but because you have a lot more data. Now, hard drive space is cheap this day and age, as are memory cards for your camera. Uh, I recommend that shouldn't be a big issue for you, but do know that if you take a lot of photos and you're using raw and you're saving them on your computer, it's going to take up space five to ten times faster. So that's something to consider. Post-processing is required with RAW, so while it's easier to do post-processing, the fact is you have to do it, whereas with JPEG you don't have to do it. You can't send a RAW file to somebody and say, hey, take a look at this. They're not going to be able to, to see what you're sending them. You can't post it online because web browsers don't display it. It's really a proprietary image format by brand and often by camera that you need to have software that be able to read that particular type of RAW file format. And, uh, and third, it's actually, what I was saying, raw format compatibility. You may have to make sure the software you're using can read your camera's raw format. Typically, if you have new software, all the cameras made, uh, well, at least the big brands that, uh, that shoot in raw, that were made a little before that software date, should be able to be read in that software. 
Where the issue comes in is if you get a newer camera and you have software that's older, it likely won't be able to read that raw file type. You'll need to actually do an update to your software and uh, <clears throat> get the right drivers to be able to read the raw file or change your software altogether. So this is the back of a DSLR. It looks scary, feels scary, but it's not, uh, especially for somebody who gets more uh, comfortable with the DSLR. This is my 5D Mark II, but most Canon DSLRs will look very similar on the back. First thing we we'll want to do is press the menu button on the back. That's going to bring up the whole list of different categories of where we could do actual changes, software driven on the camera that aren't set up with a quick button on the back. So you'll do that and you'll see that you'll be able to select a different category. What you want to use is the little thumbstick uh, just to the right of the screen, at least on my camera, and find the menu area that has the quality option. So on mine, it's the very leftmost uh, area, which is the picture of the little camera, and it's the first one <clears throat> that has quality listed there. And that's the one we want to find. What we're going to do next is press the uh, set button after we've highlighted it. So the big dial right beside the screen is our, uh, is our main dial, and you'll want to use that to, if it's further down, rotate down and select quality once it's highlighted. You press the set button that's in the center of it and that'll open up the menu for you. So what that's going to do is uh, open up this screen and you're going to see that we're going to have two types of files we can select, RAW and JPEG. And how the 5D works is you can use the quick dial here, and I think I called the main dial a minute ago, it's quick dial. You could rotate that and that'll allow you to change the JPEG quality that you're using. You probably defaulted to large file with fine smoothing on. That's the L with the very uh, smooth curved um, triangle there. If you're ever using JPEG, always make sure you use that one. Never use the smaller medium. Never use one with the little stepped uh, triangle because that's that's not fine smoothing and the images won't look as good. Always use the fine smoothing large file and uh, don't use anything else if you're just using JPEG. So you could use this dial and turn off JPEG where the dash is, or you could rotate to other types of JPEG file types. Uh, <clears throat> as I said a minute ago, always use the large with fine smoothing. Uh, if you use any other kind, you're going to get substandard images. And with data being so cheap and, and CF cards and SD cards being cheap, there's no point in using anything else. Now if you use the main dial on the front of the camera, you'll be able to rotate that. Uh, and change the raw option. So it's an image of my 5D that's the top and that's the uh, the main dial that's right there. And by rotating it, you see that I can change the raw from being dashed to raw. On my camera there's three options. There's raw, there's uh, S1 and S2. Don't use the smaller raw versions. Uh, there's no, real no point. If you're going to use raw, use the raw like this. And if you're new to using raw, and you're uncomfortable with whether you're going to be able to process properly, you can actually set it to shoot both RAW and JPEG. It's obviously going to take a lot of space on your memory card, but it'll give you the opportunity to create a RAW file of your images and still have the JPEG that you're used to. Uh, if you happen to set both of them to Dash by mistake, don't worry, it always defaults, defaults to, uh, to JPEG. Uh, I prefer to use only RAW when I'm shooting any uh, any session now at this point. I'm comfortable enough with RAW and I've got the software to do what I need to do that I find it's a lot more convenient to do the tweaks I need to do in, uh, in Adobe Lightroom, which is what I use, uh, so I don't bother with JPEG. But again, it's going to be up to, uh, to personal preference. So hopefully that's helped you. Uh, and I want to show you a little something special here. If you are interested in making cool images like this, this is uh, macro water painting. This is something I have got a free ebook on that you might be interested in. Please feel free to, uh, to take a look and uh, check out how to do this. If you go to my website, photographyin123.com backslash macro dash water dash painting dash tutorial, you'll be able to sign up to get a free ebook that shows you exactly how to do this. The URL is also listed below in the description. So please check it out, uh, please write any questions or comments on this video, and definitely subscribe. 
I uh, look forward to your questions, and I uh, will post another video soon for you. Thanks, and have a great day.